Let's have a look at this video where everything goes wrong. Let's unpack it and see what we can learn from it. Now, I'm not interested in taking people apart and giving people a hard time. Hey, things go wrong when we go four-wheel driving. Let's use this situation to see what we can learn so that it doesn't happen to us or anybody that we know. All right, so this is obviously, well, I say obviously. To me, it looks obvious that this vehicle rollover happened in the Victorian high country in Australia. At least the terrain looks very, very much like Victorian high country terrain where we have very steep hills and we have the eucalypts in the environment and so on. Now, I've driven a lot in this sort of country and it is steep country and can be very gravelly and loose and we can get a lot of washouts and so on in the terrain and you'll see some of that in this video. But everything goes bad in this video for these guys. So let's roll and have a look at what happens. All right, here we go, play. So you can see they're way down the bottom of the hill. It's a long climb. Now right at the outset, it seems to me like they're traveling quite quickly. Okay, so they've come off a main road onto this side track. Yeah, I know that temptation. They've got a lot of pace on, too much pace. You can see already they're traveling quite quickly and also you can hear, if you listen carefully, you can hear the tires scrabbling for traction. Now, this is one of those things when you're four wheel driving is finding that balance between traveling slow enough to be safe and have good control and traveling fast enough to get the job done. And it's always a fine juggle. I always err towards the side of going a bit slower than I think I need to if I'm in doubt, rather than going too fast. Because when you go too fast, you create a lot more energy and somehow you have to control that energy. Now, I, well, I got a thought. Let's see as this video unfolds. Oi -ya! Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, way too much momentum going on there. Look, he just about launched all four tyres off the ground. The whole front end unloaded, came off the ground, and the back end certainly unloaded a lot. Now, what happens in that moment when you're doing a steep climb is you lose a lot of your forward momentum. And then notice that where I stopped, just before I stopped the video, he basically stalled out. I think he's tackled this hill in second gear low range as opposed to first gear low range. Now, depending on what type of vehicle you've got and, and the type of motor and the amount of low down torque you've got can determine the gear selection. With a vehicle like this, and, the, and I think this is probably a petrol motor, um, with a vehicle like this, first high, but a uh, first low, but higher engine RPMs will be better than second low and lower engine RPMs or a much higher momentum. I suspect this guy in his uh, Range Rover here is in second low and that's probably been the incorrect gear choice. So he's come up, he's lo got, lost his momentum because he's got air, you don't get traction when your tyres are in the air. He's unloaded the back wheels which has meant that their wheels spun a bit. When he's come back down the engines He's backed off as well, I will say. He's backed off the power when he's launched into the air. So all of that's against him now. He comes back on and he feeds the throttle back in and the motor hasn't got it now. There's, the momentum's gone, the wheel speed's lost, and, and that's why he ends up stalling out. Now let's watch what happens next. Okay, so he's rolling back. Okay, great. He's been able to pull the vehicle up. He's trying to restart it. Okay, now when you stop a vehicle, when you have a vacuum brake booster system, which this vehicle most likely does have, I, don't, I haven't worked on these vehicles, but you get one or two brake applications stored energy in the brake booster. So when you're in this situation and your engine's stalled, 
you want to be very, very careful not to be pumping or pulsing your brake pedal. If you've got the brakes on, you hold those suckers on, pull the handbrake on, and you just, just leave your foot all the way to the floor so that you have a little bit of reserve braking effort. Okay, so he's trying to restart this, and this is why I say I think this is a petrol motor. It's stalled out, steep angle, and he's got to get the motor restarted. Okay, he's got the vehicle secure. He's safe at the moment. When, when you're in this situation where this type of vehicle where you're you know, trying to get a petrol motor started, one of the techniques you can use to get it going is hold your throttle wide open and basically let that airflow get through the motor as you're cranking it over to basically get fresh air in there and get all of the excess fuel out into the exhaust system. Now, what's the problem with doing that? you've got your foot on the firewall on the brake pedal. So how do you get it across to the accelerator? And that's a real challenge. You know, it can be done, but it can be very, very difficult to do. Okay, so now he's obviously sitting here, he's panicking a fair bit. Take notice of the position of his front wheels. Which way are they pointing at the moment? If he rolls backwards, which is where he's wanting to roll, what's going to happen to the front end of the vehicle? Imagine if he had those front wheels on the other, other lock. We're getting to the exciting bit now. Trying to start it again. Come on, fire up. Okay, notice he just creeped back a tiny bit there. That's a little bit more of his brake booster gone. Less brake. Uh-oh. Ay, 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 ay. That's a whole world of pain. Like I say, it's easy to sit here and critique on after the event in the moment. That whoever our oh mate was who was driving that, his adrenaline would have been pumping. I've been in these sorts of situations. I've been fortunate, haven't had this happen. But I think what happened is he he's slowly lost his vacuum on the brakes, and then he's gone for you know it's rolled back a little bit, and then he's. He's gone for the, you know, oh, and he's got no brake. And now he's like, he can't slow the vehicle up and it just starts to roll. And he, he would have been jamming that brake pedal through the floor. Like, there's no doubt you, anybody would be, but there's no assistance from the vacuum. It's gone. And so you basically just got a very, very hard brake pedal in front of you. If he'd had his steering lock the other side, he might have had a chance of keeping things under control. But he's probably still would have been struggling and probably still would have rolled down the hill but maybe he'd have been able to keep things under control enough to roll down the hill sort of semi out of control and keep it on its wheels but hey that's hypothetical anyway let's uh watch look at the amount of debris as as the cameraman runs down the hill as you can appreciate this is not you know, not brilliantly filmed because old mate's just legging it but let's have a watch you can see it's a nasty hill as well. Like there's some big holes and washouts in this. There's his windscreen. Tarp, recovery straps, esky. Is that a snorkel? I don't know. Just general bits and pieces, recovery gear, clothes, a briefcase, is it? You can see the cameraman struggling to get down the hill. Like you can hear his feet slipping and sliding, glass everywhere. I'm so glad this guy wasn't on his own, eh? And had mates there. If you know more about the behinds of the scenes of this, link any videos or content to us. That'll be, help us all learn. As you can see, all the tires are blowing, the vehicle's upside down. They're talking to the people in the car. So, oh, gee, I hope everybody was okay. This is one, one of the things why, and reasons why we always wear our seat belts when you're off-road 
you wear them on the road, you're safer on road than you are off road, especially when you want to start tackling this sort of terrain. So always wear your seat belts. You've got a far better chance of staying with the vehicle, staying inside that protective capsule of the vehicle than if you just let yourself be flailed around like arms and legs everywhere. You've got a real good chance of coming out the vehicle and people do come out the windscreen and then they get crushed and you may well have seen those videos. Yeah, there you go, wow. Anyway, guys, let us know in the comments down below if you know any more about this incident or if you've got a video that you'd like me to comment on um, along this line, let us know. Send us an inbox us or email it to madmat at madmat4wd.com.au. All right, guys, catch you later. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the track.